test optional, test blind, test flexible. I mean, the terms are getting out of control. What's up, YouTube? I'm back again today to discuss three really important terms. Test optional, test flexible, and test blind. What do those terms mean? What do they mean for you, the student? Today, I'm gonna to explain all of that and more. Let's get into it. As you probably know, because of test optional policies and because of the coronavirus, many more schools are moving towards test optional. It's a new trend in the past five to 10 years, really been picking up steam and coronavirus has accelerated that steam and that trend exponentially. So we have thousands of schools this year going test optional, which is a great thing because many students literally have been unable to take the test. So for all of you out there, you know, there is a saving grace that you maybe don't have to submit the score, but what does exactly test optional mean? I mean, every day on my various social media channels, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, people are asking me, like, does this mean that the SAT is canceled? Is it over? So in this video, I'm gonna explain, is the SAT canceled? What's going on? And basically how to handle this test optional scenario going forward. So what does test optional mean? It means that a college or university is not requiring students to submit SAT or ACT scores for admissions. One thing you guys should know is that each school's test optional policy is different. So even though that statement makes a lot of sense, it may vary from school to school. Now, like I said before, a thousand schools, over a thousand schools this year have become test optional. Basically, they're not requiring students to send in their SAT or ACT scores. But the, the next question students always ask me is, well, what do I do? Should I just not send them? So I have an answer for that. This is kind of situation where those schools are kind of looking at the SAT as any other extracurricular or uh, you know feather in your cap. If you're a really great soccer player and you're you know a varsity captain and you're playing on the soccer team, or you're really great at debate or DECA or whatever the, whatever the case may be, um, you definitely want to add that on your resume, right? So if you're a great test taker and your test scores are above the threshold, then the test option for you would probably be to submit your scores to the school because they're going to benefit you. Now, on the other hand, if your scores maybe are not as good, you might not want to send those scores. So if you're below the 50th percentile under a test optional scenario, you probably wouldn't want to send your scores because they may not benefit your application. Just as if you know I'm a terrible basketball player, I'm not going to put Put down basketball on my application as one of my main characteristics because you know I'm just not good at it and I don't have a passion for it so it kind of becomes that kind of situation now that said there's also other things that I wanted to get into such as test flexible so let's go into text test flexible tough term to say all right so test flexible what does that mean test flexible is a policy where the colleges will accept test scores other than the SAT or ACT so things like uh, AP exams IB uh, sometimes SAT subject tests, basically they're flexible in which tests they will take, but they do want you to show some proficiency in testing to get into the school. So that's pretty much what test flexible means. A lot of schools have moved to test flexible. You know, that's kind of an interesting discussion because, you know, you kind of say, well, why not go test optional? I think many of those schools kind of will, will flip over to the test optional as well, or maybe they can even have test optional flexible. I'm sure there's some schools out there that have that policy where they're flexible, but also optional. So uh, basically giving you the student more of a choice and more power in the process. All right, now the third term I told you I was gonna define, what is test blind? Now, test blind is definitely the most extreme version of this. They will not look at any test scores that you cannot send it in. We don't wanna see it. We don't wanna look at it. That's what test blind is, as opposed to test optional where, you know, you can send them in or you don't, you know, you don't have to, but you can. Here with test blind, they just don't wanna see them at all. And there's only a handful of schools that are test blind. And, you know, I, I'll list them in the description of this video, but many of you know that University of California system is going test blind in, a, in several years. So um, that's a growing trend. Uh, I would say growing slowly, but definitely growing. Um, I'm gonna discuss the implications of all these now. So the next thing I wanna tell you guys is, okay, so that's great. You know, we have three terms, test optional, test flexible, test blind. What does that mean for me as a student? Like what, what do I do to manage around this? Which one is right for me? And what does it all mean? So let me get into that for you. So the first thing I wanna discuss with you guys is that 
these policies have a lot of caveats, right? They're not as straightforward as they may seem. It's not just don't send something in, right? That would be way too easy. The college process is difficult and it just has a lot of nuances to it. So I think if you're looking at these terms and you're saying this is an opportunity for me to just ditch testing altogether, that's probably not the best decision because, you know, if you're applying to a combination of schools, some that do uh, require tests and some that don't, or some that are optional or some that are blind, you still need the tests for some of them. Now, what I'm gonna get into next is other reasons you would need the SAT. Well, let's go into them. So number one, if you're an international student, most of this doesn't apply. Um, number two, if you are an out of state student, typically they wanna see standardized test scores from many schools. And that was something that the UC system did uh, address. It is only test blind or test optional uh, for students that live in California. Number three, Many scholarships are tied to testing. So if you're looking for a scholarship, you're going to need to hit certain test scores and you know test scores can be very beneficial to you financially. So for many scholarships, you're going to be required to send in a test score. Number four, if you're an NCA athlete, such as myself when I was in college, you have to submit an SAT score. Like you cannot become eligible without it. Now that may change, but right now that's the case. Number five, placement. So if you want to place out of, you know, English 101, Math 101, you know, basic level classes, um, a lot of schools give their own placement tests. I vividly remember going to college and I know exactly where I took my um, Italian placement test and my English placement test to place out of certain courses that I didn't have to take. And that's something that you want to do. If, if the SAT or ACT will help you place out of certain tests, you want to skip those classes. You'll, you'll get the higher level, more interesting classes and you'll advance your degree more quickly. So those are some five added benefits of taking the SAT or ACT that they don't really include in all these discussions about test optional, test flexible. But yet there is more. Obviously, look, if you're not submitting a test, other parts of your application are going to be scrutinized. So your GPA is going to be heavily scrutinized. Your extracurricular activities are going to be scrutinized. You're going to need to add something else to your application. If you don't have the SAT or the ACT, you gotta have something else to fill that in and to show that proficiency. So that's what I was saying before. It's, it's not an opportunity necessarily to just ditch the SAT and ACT. And if you are gonna do that, you wanna replace it with something. You know, you wanna spend that time that you would spend and those resources on other activities, such as your extracurriculars, you know, spending more time studying for class, stuff like that. It's not expected that the SAT is gone and then nothing else needs to be quality, right? So that's one of the big misconceptions I wanted to clear up for you guys. Now, there's other things that come into play and I'm gonna get into those right now. So let's talk about why is this whole system developing this way? Like what, what's the reason for test optional? Number one, I would say, you know, we wanna find those students that are a diamond in the rough. You know, I work with hundreds of students, we work with school districts and we meet thousands of students, right? Through Nick the Tutor, I've met, you know, hundreds of thousands of students online, I guess have seen my material. And I know many people complain, I'm a great student. I'm a 99 average guy or gal. What, why should I be held down by my lower SAT score? Well, that's a valid point. So those students benefit greatly from test optional policies, right? That's the student that would want to consider test optional. If you feel like your GPA and your scholastic ability just doesn't match up with your SAT or ACT score, or for whatever reason, and this is a great year for that, you don't have the opportunity or the resources to take the SAT or ACT. And I totally understand why you would go test optional. Now, what we need to understand and a lot of things with college, there's a catch. Right, so right now I wanna tell you about the catch. I gotta come closer to tell you the catch. So the catch is this also benefits colleges. And now how does it do that? Well, if you think about it, when you engage in a test optional policy, the college is gonna get more applicants. And when the college gets more applicants, then the college will be able to maintain a lower acceptance rate. So more applicants, less acceptances, means more money for the college and a, hot, and a lower acceptance rate which benefits the college in the US News and World Report rankings. So unfortunately, test optional isn't all about benefiting the students, but it also greatly benefits colleges as well. Now, you're probably saying, Nick, okay, that's great, but the benefits outweigh the negatives. I wouldn't necessarily disagree, but there also are some major benefits that colleges get from test optional policy. So there's another one. The other one is that they're going to have a decrease in low test scores. So there's plenty of students that they think are exceptional that they would love to accept 
without the SAT or the ACT, like that 99 average student that submits this test score that they don't like. They're able to remove all of those from their test scores, therefore raising their average test scores in the eyes of the US News and World Report. Now, that's a little bit disingenuous if you think about it, right? Because you're artificially inflating um, your, your test scores, exploiting a test optional policy that in theory is meant to benefit students. So um, that's another hidden benefit that colleges are getting from test optional policies that they don't really want to tell you about. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, like I said, they're kind of removing low test scores from their numbers and they're at, in some instances actually urging students to apply test optional uh, or reapply test optional when they realize that their test scores are not in line with what they're looking for. So that kind of seems a little bit shady and is part of the test optional thing that a lot of people don't like. All right guys, so let's conclude here. What does all this mean? Basically, we're getting two tracks of college admissions right now, right? We have the test optional track and we have the test sender track, right? It's kind of getting to a point where students are feeling forced to pick one track or the other. I don't know if that's necessarily the greatest thing, right? To have non-test senders and test senders. That's kind of splitting people up and we don't like that, right? We want everyone to be on an even playing field. So, uh, you know, having these two tracks, I think is a little bit problematic and schools will eventually work that out. But right now, what I would say is to cover all of your bases, you probably want to take the SAT or the ACT. If it's not good, you don't send it. If it is good, you do, but you at least want to give it a shot. That said, hopefully this video taught you something about test optional, test flexible, and test blind. I'm Nick the Tutor. Thanks for watching, and I'm out. Peace, guys.